Hello and good day. My name is Sam, aka Professor Equine, for those of you within the Brony community. Uh, what I'm here to talk about today is a bit of a reaction that I've got from my students regarding my research of the Brony community. They have many questions about it, so I've created this presentation to hopefully alleviate fears and various myths about the Brony community for, for people who are not within said community. That is why this piece is titled, The Myth About Bronies, or why a bunch of grown men like My Little Pony aren't as creepy as you think. So that begs the first question, what is a brony? Uh, there are various definitions of what a brony is, but the general consensus is a brony is a male fan of the show, usually aged 15 and up, who are into my Little Pony, Friendship is Magic. Now, there are various discrepancies. Uh, some female fans of the show also like to consider themselves bronies. Uh, however, there are a few who do like to consider themselves separated through gender and consider themselves Pegasisters. But when most people hear the term brony and first learn about what a brony is, they have this general uh, reaction they start to wonder what it is that might be wrong with grown men liking a show that is supposed to be catered for little girls. They may wonder, are they perverts? Uh, are they looking to molest children? Did they go to Penn State? They might not understand entirely. So in order to get that understanding, we need to start at the beginning. So we have to go back to the driving force of this new remake of My Little Pony. Enter Lauren Faust. She is a uh, world-class animator. Uh, she was one of the creative forces behind Foster's Imaginary Friends, and another show that get gathered a large male audience, even though it was a show intended for girls, uh, the Powerpuff Girls. So she's no stranger to gathering a wide audience um, when creating a cartoon series that may be catered to a specific demographic. But that may not... Um, create a good understanding uh, to people outside of the fandom as to why uh, grown men like this show. So what I've done is that I've created a few suppositions as to why um, there's a mass appeal uh, of male fans to this show that is supposed to be for little girls. Uh, first and foremost, and this is probably Faux's bread and butter, she attacks the idea of social generalization. Now, social generalization is the idea that little boys are supposed to play with guns and trucks, and little girls are supposed to play with ponies and Barbies. Uh, she doesn't believe that in the way that she presents her shows, and doesn't uh, include very many aspects that reinforce uh, gender social uh, stereotypes. Even though there are aspects of the show that do include fashion and going to the Grand Galloping Gala or enjoying various tea parties, uh, they are by and large a very small fraction of the show. Uh, what actually drives, in my opinion, a number of fans to the show are the characters themselves. Uh, in most episodes, the characters will have issues, just like in any other television program, except they run a little bit deeper than your typical uh, little girl show. Uh, within most shows catered to that demographic, uh, usually the problem can be solved with a brand new dress or a makeover. However, in this program, that's not necessarily the case uh, to solve anything. Uh, a couple very good examples of this. Um, be this character here, Applejack. Uh, she is an apple farmer, and one season she had to harvest all the apples by herself, and this led her to have massive overexhaustion. Uh, it became a problem for the town because she had other duties uh, for the town, but she could not perform them because of her being overexhausted, and it almost destroyed the town. Uh, another classic example is Pinkie Pie. Pinkie Pie is a character who loves to throw parties, and one time she threw a party and none of her friends uh, came who were invited, and she slipped into a depression. 
and she started talking to inanimate objects and then giving the inanimate objects personalities of their own. Uh, that's something you really wouldn't see in any other um, typical little girl show. And most infamously is Twilight Sparkle. In a recent episode in the second season, Twilight Sparkle, who is considered the scholar of the group, uh, has to give uh, reports about friendships and friendship problems. Uh, however, she had a deadline in her head that she thought she had to meet and could not find a friendship problem. So she took it upon herself to create a friendship problem and in turn almost destroyed the entire town like so many of these other issues uh, that have presented. Uh, a second thing that is um, quite remarkable about the show that probably does appeal to a lot of male fans is the fact that it uses a lot of pop culture references, both outside in the advertising through the Hub Network and within the show internally. Uh, classic cases are the Hub has uh, parodied such movies as Bride Bridesmaids and Poltergeist uh, in their advertising billboards across the country. Now, within the program itself, there are many pop culture references to various um, movies such as Star Wars, uh, Gone with the Wind, and most recently, uh, The Big Lebowski. Now, some of this imagery can create an idea for those of you who may not understand the fandom to kind of get where it's coming from and why fans, are, especially male fans, are starting to get into the show. But sometimes pictures just don't justify it. So what I've done is I've taken a few clips from the show that don't exactly depict a prototypical show for little girls. Hey Twilight, what's soaking wet and clueless? Fluttershy, I've had just about a Your face! from those clips that there are aspects of the show that really aren't prototypical of a little girl's cartoon. But what really interests me about this phenomenon is the community itself. Uh, like most fan communities, they do engage in some of the normal activities, such as creating artwork like this stained glass piece, or life-size plushies of various characters. Uh, some will also engage in cosplay, which is the idea of uh, dressing up as various characters within a show and then acting those parts out, usually within a convention or online role playing. Some will actually take various uh, songs from the program and remix it to their liking through different genres, such as from classical to dubstep. Uh, and some will actually write fan fictions, which is the idea of taking characters from a, from a show and putting them in situations that they might not normally be in. But what truly fascinates me about this group um, that stands them out from a typical fan community is their um, united purpose. Uh, within most fan communities, there will always be divisions, sort of infighting about various aspects of, of different things within a fan um, community or a show's canon. Bronies uh, from what I've observed, do not really engage in this kind of behavior. 
they take that message of friendship that is uh, present throughout the entire show and do something with it. And that's what really struck me as uh, fascinating about this group. Um, traditionally, whenever a fan community gets involved, they're mainly self-centered. But when a good example uh, is when you have an internet agitator or troll try to stir up anger or flame wars uh, within a fan community, it generally starts a lot of flame war and a lot of hate brewing within said community. Uh, bronies don't do that. As a matter of fact, they usually have response pieces like this that generally accept that troll and, and acknowledge that, look, we know you're trying to cause trouble and, and, and grief, but we accept you for who you are even though we don't agree with you. And that's one thing when you take that message of friendship and tolerance uh, into the internet. But what makes it even more fascinating is that they take that message of friendship and take it out into the community. Uh, it started with Lauren Faust, who did a charity auction for earthquake relief uh, for Japan earlier this year, and a couple of bronies kind of got the idea from that to start doing things within their own community and being proactive. Uh, Broniesforgood.org is a wonderful website that shows um, how to start blood drives and charity drives and has, has various drives of their own. As a matter of fact, starting this month, they started Operation Winter Wrap-Up, which is a program designed to make sure that children this holiday season get something that under their tree or at least a warm coat so that they feel a little bit of love during this holiday season. Additionally, some bronies have teamed up with Your Siblings, which is a humanitarian organization who presents um, humanitarian aid and food to less developed countries. Now, all of this is what separates the brony from the common fandom. It's not typical to see uh, a Star Wars fan go out and do such things, at least not as common as what you see within a brony community. But if what I've said here today has not swayed you in any way to at least not think that they're as creepy as you believe, or maybe they're actually a decent bunch of people, um, the bronies really only have one response to that if you still think there might be something wrong with them. And that is that haters are going to hate. They realize that not everyone's going to understand them or get why they really enjoy the show. A uh, common response that I have gotten from a number of uh, bronies that I've seen in various meetups is they understand why people don't get them, but the only response is watch an episode or two of the show. If you don't like it after watching a couple episodes, then you have a right to complaint. If not, and you have yet to watch an episode, then you're just being prejudiced, which is something that we all strive to eliminate. So that is their argument, to not have this uh, vicious prejudice against them that there's something wrong with them. And by giving them the chance, and to at least talk to them or find some sort of understanding behind why they are such this, of a community, might actually lead to a greater planet. Thank you.